Hello folks, uh, this is part two in the Learning Source Pond series. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, registering commands, which is probably the next step for you guys who are trying to learn how to uh, trying to learn how to program in Source Pond. Um, of course, this tutorial is made for people who have little to no programming experience, which is completely fine. Uh, we're just going to be talking a little bit about uh, registering commands and stuff like that. So yeah moving on so we've covered everything up to unplug and start and then printing something into the uh printing something to the server console uh, now we're going to be doing something that the actual players or admins uh interact with so we're going to be registering commands so the first step to register a command we have we have two options we have register admin command and then register console command the difference between these two is that one limits it to admins or people with certain types of permissions and the other one is public so everyone can use it uh, we're going to be just doing console command right now we'll cover permission systems and admin stuff later so we'll just be dealing with register console command so the first parameter of register console command is actually the command itself so if we want to name the command test we'll do sm underscore test and the sm underscore is important uh, i'll explain that in a little bit and the next one is the callback function. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. And then the next one is the description, right? This this describes what the command does. And descriptions are always important, always fill them out. So we're gonna say uh, prints test to chat. Right, super simple. Awesome. So uh, talking a little bit about the sm underscore here. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, um, this indicates comments, right? So this is a single line comment, right? So that means you can put code below it or whatnot. It's just this line could be whatever you want. Uh, and then these are multi-line comments where you can have anything. And when you compile it, it'll just ignore it, anything covering these. So yeah, that's just something to know. Um, so when you do SM test in console, right? Uh, it'll execute this command, but what source mod also does is it allows you to do something like this where you can go ahead and uh, uh, Type this in chat uh, If you don't have sm underscore then this this won't work. So you need to keep sm underscore there uh, But anyway moving on So that's the first parameter as some test the next one is the callback function, right? So don't don't worry too much about what this is uh Command test. And I know this is kind of a lot, and that's okay. Awesome. So we have command test, right? And that should be the second parameter here. So basically what we're doing is we're giving source mod the function that we want to be called whenever someone types this, right? So when you type SM test in chat, what source mod will do, it'll look up and be like, oh, they typed a command. Let's go ahead and send it to the plugin and send it to this function. So here we're able to actually do stuff, right? Uh, now, the client, uh, if, so client is expressed as an integer, right? Uh, an integer is just any, any number that's a whole number. Uh, it can be negative, it could be positive, but for clients, it's always gonna be between uh, zero and 64. Uh, We'll talk a little bit more about what the client index actually is, but that's not super important right now. You just have to know that that is the person that executed the command. So what we can do, right, is we can print to chat, right? And we can just print that client j just to them and we'll just say test. So now what will happen is when they type SM test, it'll call this function and then we'll print to them. Super easy, super simple. Uh, there is a few problems with this though. Like I mentioned before, you can type SM test in console, right? But we'll, we'll be printing to their chat and that's, that, that, that's, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If they're typing in their console, we should be printing to the console, right? And then if they're typing in the chat, we should be, we should be responding in the chat. So there's a special uh, native here that we can use. It's called reply to command and it does just this. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, so what this will do, it'll just reply in whatever form they requested in. Uh, it's super simple, super easy. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, and so, like how I mentioned how integers are any number, right? The second parameter of command dot test that's given or command test that's given to us is uh, the amount of arguments they've used, right? So if you guys have used source one in the past, you know that you can type sm ban, right? And then the individual, and then like the time, for example, right? So the, the, this is two parameters here. So our, so for this case, args would be two. Um, for arc command, there's no, we don't, we don't want any parameters, right? Uh, so what's really good to do is to force users to use your command correctly. Uh, don't, don't allow too much wiggle room. Uh, as you become a more experienced programmer, you'll realize that people who are using your stuff tend to be stupid, which is totally okay. Uh, you just have to tell them at every, uh, every time they do something wrong, uh, you, you just have to let them know that way, that way they can use it correctly. Right. So we're going to be doing a little bit of branching here. Uh, so we're going to be using an if statement, right? So if args is greater than zero, right? If args is greater than zero, we're going to reply to command. We're going to reply to them and we're going to say usage SM test, right? So this goes ahead. This, this just tells them, oh, to use it, all you need to do is do SM test. If you had parameters that you were trying to enforce, you would put them here, like, uh, like in the case of ban, we would do something like that just to let them know what the parameters are. But here we'll just do usage SM test. And then we're going to go ahead and return plugin handled. Now return plugin handled is something that every command has to end with. Uh, if you don't return plugin handled at the end of the command, um, like if we ignored this part that I just highlighted, uh, if, if this return plugin handled wasn't here, right? What would happen was, uh, when source mod executes this, right? We're not, we wouldn't be telling them whether or not, uh, our plugin handled what was supposed to happen and what would get printed in chat by default would be unknown command. So by returning plugin handled at the end of the command, we prevent that error. Uh, we're saying, Hey, listen, we handled this command. We're, we're done. This is, that's all that needs to happen. Um, so what, what, what we do here, right? What return actually means, it means end this function call. It means we're done. Okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, on plugin start was a void function, right? Notice how we didn't have to return anything. Void means that the function has no return, right? If we tried to, let's say, return one or something, we would get an error. This doesn't make sense. You're not supposed to return anything because on plugin start, there's nothing that you can do about it. But with command test, we, there, there, we have some options. Uh, we can choose to ignore the command uh, or we can choose to handle it, right? So by returning plugin handled, we're saying, hey, it's, we got it, it's ours. And it also ends the function call, right? So let's pretend they submitted an argument. Let's say that they typed SM test five, right? Cool. So we go into SM, we go into command underscore test, right? This function gets called. And then args is going to be greater than zero because we have one argument here. And it's going to say, oh, hey, you used this wrong. The usage is SM test and then return plugin handled. We're going to, we're going to leave this function call and we're not going to, we're not going to do our desired result because they used it wrong. Right? So now let's pretend that they didn't do it. Let's pretend that this five doesn't exist. Right? So what you're going to do is, uh, args is going to be zero, right? So is zero greater than zero? The answer is clearly no. So it won't go into this. And it'll just reply to command test and return plugin handled, and uh, that's that's it. Uh, this is your this is your first uh, command hook. You can do tons of other things. If you guys haven't seen the um, if you guys haven't seen the API documentation page for source mod, you should definitely look at it. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, that's that basically tells you everything about um, that'll basically tell you everything about all the natives that you can use along with all the forwards, right? We talked a little bit about that. Um, so for example, this is a uh, native because we're calling out. This is a native because we're calling out. And this is a forward because source mod is calling this function for us, right? We already know that on plugin starts a forward and then this is a native as well. Um, not super important, but it's just kind of good to know what's calling into your code and what's calling out. Um, 
so there, there's something special about command test though. Uh, if you didn't register this console command, right? Command test would never get called. Uh, that's because it's it's a private forward. Um, so let's go ahead and mark that. This is a private forward. You don't have to actually mark this in your code. I'm just doing it for just so you can see. Um, a private forward means that you have to register it yourself, which is what we're doing with register console command, right? We're registering this private forward with a global forward or, or a public forward. Hold up. With a global or public forward, it means that you don't have to register it. We like uh, source mod will call it into your code automatically. You don't have to register on plug and start. Uh, but for things like register console command and stuff like that, you definitely need to register it. So that's why it's a private forward. So you guys, uh, this is the end of the second video, a very short one, but it's just, uh, just little stepping stones. If you guys have any issues with anything, let me know. Uh, if you haven't seen the first episode, that's setting up SP edit. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. Uh, like, if you like it, tell me if you want more. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of the day, guys.